to get started. Uh, my name is Travis Thurston, and I'm with City, the Center for Innovative Design and Instruction. I am one of the instructional designers there. If you have questions about Canvas or your courses, uh, please feel free to pull me aside, ask me any questions, or we can set up an appointment uh, for later this week or next week. Also, uh, these, these sessions are short, but we'd like you to continue the discussion uh, that we start here. Um, so please feel free to talk with your colleagues and continue this discussion as we go. Uh, because we don't have very much time, I'll give the floor to Angie. Angie Minicello, give her a hand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm from the Department of Engineering Education, College of Engineering, and I am a um, engineering lecturer at Brigham City. I teach in the a regional campus uh, associates of pre-engineering program so that basically means I teach mainly 2000 level every once in a while a 1000 level engineering course to regional campus students located throughout the state and through the um, interactive video conferencing system mainly although I am moving to online um, now so I guess now the semester okay so um, what we want to talk about today is student, uh, engaging students using technology. And it's a really big topic. So how to kind of focus that is I'm going to show you one, one technology tool that I use in my classes, which I found to be very useful and very fun. And so we're going to, I'm going to give you a quick overview, and then we're going to take you through a little demo of that, and then hopefully give you information. And if you're interested and you want to pursue it, please contact uh, me or any of my other fellow peoples out there, uh, and we'll be happy to help you get it set up. It's not hard at all. Okay, so um, that's what I said. So we're gonna we're gonna just run through this as quickly as we can. Travis is gonna give me a five minute kind of warning, and if you go to that website, um, you'll be all set up to do the demo. Okay, I'd like to introduce a couple of people that I work with really closely. Ted Campbell is a math lecturer from the College of Science. He's also a Brigham Cityite. So we teach the same students. He gets them first, and then I, then I get them. Okay? And then um, he's calculus teacher extraordinaire. And then Abby Fisher, who is a mathematics major. She's um, my undergraduate researcher on this project that we're working on. Um, she's actually undergraduate researcher of the year for Brigham City this year. So give her a little hand. And um, so she's a great, been a great help. Um, what we're working on is we're working on a NSF-funded um, project to look at how online learning forums can be used in, we're looking at math ed, calculus, but it could also be science ed, engineering ed, ed ed, whatever, um, how these things can be used to help students' um, um, achievement and effective outcomes and get more students specifically through, through calculus and into the engineering program. And so what we're doing on this project is we're ending, we're ending up using the tool that I'm going to tell you about today. Okay, so big question, what are online learning forms? Well, we probably know a lot of what they are already. Um, they're kind, I kind of think of them as kind of the next generation discussion boards. Who here has used an internet discussion board? Probably everybody. You probably had your students using them. We had the tool in Canvas, right? Um, so... Uh, so what are they? Well, they're internet sites. People have conversations that are text-based, threaded discussions, asynchronous. Um, they can accommodate group work. Really good, really probably mostly used in blended and online learning. Um, so the tool we're going to show you, I like to think of it more, it's kind of an enhanced discussion board. And I like to think of it as this online learning forum kind of idea with an emphasis on learning. So some of the, more of the things, discussion is a big part of learning, but there are also other things that are a big part of learning. Um, question and answer, instructor feedback, uh, co-construction of knowledge, <clears throat> um, databasing and being able to go back and review this material. So this tool kind of facilitates those sorts of ideas, especially... Um, and kind of the reason that I glommed onto it. It's especially useful in sort of a, a STEM equation-based type of um, um, class or, or material. Not that it's not good for anything else, but there's a, there's a latex-driven uh, latex 
equation editor that's really nice. There's also some coding features if you, if you do a lot of coding. So it really makes the visual aspects of the knowledge transfer very nice and easy, and it ends up looking like something that you can look at and understand. Okay. Um, some of the other things the tool can do, um, it, it's really easy for instructors to pro provide feedback. There's separate instructor and student areas to post in. It's wiki-based, so all of these um, areas are editable. So like if you have an instructor in TAs, there's one instructor block, but maybe it's a TA answering, or maybe it's another instructor, or maybe you know, the instructor, the TA's um, fixing what the instructor wrote because the instructor messed it up or something like that, right? Same thing with the students. When the students are constructing their answers, they can edit each other's. They all get credit for it. Their names all show up if they post in the open. But so it's very, it's, fee, it's the idea of this co-construction and this wiki nature is very, very useful. Easy ways to endorse work. Thanks, good answer, good question buttons. And really uh, pretty easy access to very easy access to um, participation statistics. Um, they're all there right for you. You know, how many people posted, who's the high post, how many posts each person had, et cetera. All there right at a, a click, okay? So it's a, it's a nice, easy tool. It's free, and it, doesn't, it isn't hard to set up. So that's kind of what I like, too. Okay, so if we go, if you go to that um, website, we're just going to try to give you a quick demo. Um, keep in mind, just click on this right here and you should get something that looks like this. This is the tool. The tool is called Piazza. It's um, you know Italian for plaza, right? So the idea is it's a place where everybody comes together and talks and shares information. Um, no, you're not giving your students pizza. It's Piazza. Okay. So, um, so this is what it looks like. There's a ton of features in here. I can't show you them all. So again, if you're interested, let me, let me show you. Hopefully some of them will pop out at you as we do this. Or if you go into those other demo classes that I have in that, that class, you'll be able to see a real class. I have a demo of my real class that I've used it, so you'll be able to see a little bit more what happens, but, or what people do. But this is just the basics. So for instance, um, even before I start class, as the instructor, I say, I post this. I, I kind of pre-register everybody in my tool, right? So they get an email saying, click here so you can be in Piazza. And then they go to the site, and they see this with my welcome message saying, Hey, everybody, we're going to use this as our Q&A. This is going to be our discussion board. And if you have any questions, let me know. Immediately, I can have a student who responds and says, I'm a little bit anxious about using this tool. Is it hard? Um, and then I can go and um, somewhat quickly respond. I can give her a response. If I can work my computer. My screen's too small to do it that way. Okay. Because so I'm just going to, um, what am I going to do here? Oh. Why is this hard to do under pressure? Okay, so I'm going to respond to Abby, hopefully, and you know, give her some re give her some reinforcements, and give her a link out to our YouTube videos that say, "Hey, check check out these YouTube videos. You can use this tool." Um, and then you know, check out these YouTube videos. If you have any questions, ask me about it. I'm happy to answer the questions. Okay, so right away, even before we started class making her feel good about using this tool and getting, getting people um, used to using this tool. OK, so that's one scenario. Another scenario may be on my first day of class or the first week of class, I have an assignment. You know, the standard introduce yourself to the rest of your class assignment. And it's really important, maybe not so much I, I, I would say it's probably still important for a big face-to-face -face class because I guarantee you there are kids in that class that don't know the other kids in the class. They could be sitting next to somebody that they don't even know their name, right? Um, it's really important for us that work out in regional campuses because, you know, I'll have a student in Uinta Basin who's all by himself, and I'll have students in Brigham City and Tooele, 
how do we get them to, to not feel so alone? How do we get them to, to know each other and people in the class? So I may give them this. Um, I do. I give them this assignment um, in the syllabus that says, you know, post an introduction to the rest of the class. Well, you can, you can do that on discussion board. You can do that on here as well. And then I'm going to go out to Piazza and I'm going to say, OK, remember that assignment that's sitting in your syllabus? OK, now's the time to do it. And I want you to do it here, kind of a thing. And this can be done on the first, the first week of class. So here's my, um, here's my post kind of saying, OK, remember that assignment? OK, now I want you to do it here in this, in this tool. And it's also a good way to get them to start using the tool and getting them um, used to doing it. Okay? And then then I can have my first student reply to it and say, here he introduces his, himself as Ted, who was an engineer, but he really likes math. So he kind of went over to the dark side. and now. He's going to study math, OK? And so now everybody in the class knows that Ted is the math guy. If you have a question on how to factor, you go to Ted, right? If you have a question about the quadratic formula, you go to Ted. And right away, Abby gloms onto that and says, aha, Ted's the guy that I want to study with, OK? So right now, we have, a, we, have a relations, or we have a connection between Ted and Abby, and they may not even be in the same city, OK? So this is a real kind of easy way to do that. Okay. Um, the third scenario is a poll. I'm going to try this. It didn't work last time, but let me see. Not that Piazza didn't work. It was my setup here. So um, there's a lot of polling software out there. I don't know how many people use polling software in their classes. Poll everywhere. Or, OK, great. And they're, they're a lot of fun. And um, probably for an in-class kind of a thing, poll everywhere is probably pretty good. I just want to show you that this will do polling as well, and it's also pretty nice. I haven't actually, I'm just going to show you a different view on my computer. Oh, but not my script. OK. So um, five, minutes. five minutes. OK. So let me just really quickly show you how you could do a poll in here. I could post a new note, and I can very quickly say, I want to make it a class. And one of the things I always have trouble with is office hours, because I don't do classroom, sit in my office office hours. I do online office hours. And, um, but I don't know what time to make my office hours until I talk to my students and figure out when they work, when, they, you know, when, when do they actually engage. Right? I, want, I want to have my office hours at, at times when they can engage with me or with the material, not at times when they're at work or whatever. So I might do a poll that says um, office hours and choose the two best times. And then I'm going to add some, I'm sorry, you can't see this whole screen. It's kind of small. But I might say, OK. Um, 5 to 6 p.m. on Friday. Um, 7 to 8 p.m. on Tuesday. Um, this is for the insomniacs. 3 to 4 a.m. on Sunday. Hopefully, I hope nobody chooses that one. And 1 to 2 p.m. on Saturday. OK. And I'm going to have it open now. I'm going to have them be able to look at it. And I think that's everything I need to do. OK. And so now I'm going to flip back over to this one. So now we're back onto your site, which you should be looking at. And so here's my poll. OK. When you do office hours, um, I don't really usually do them at 3 to 4 on Sunday. No, but I mean, <laughs> um, Give them something, or do you do you collect information or questions they're asking, and then that is what comes in the office hours, or you just open it up? This is office hours. Let her rip. I've normally done it. Let her rip. I'm thinking about doing 
the trouble is, is what kind of class are you in? Are you in a class that has a dedicated synchronous component or not? So if I had a de dedicated synchronous component, um, yeah, I might, I might do something where we're going to talk about this problem. You know, maybe like a TA sort of, you know. But typically it's a letter rip. You know, you, you, you need help and you're not getting it on this web-based help-based system. You really need to talk to me. Uh, or my TA, whatever, then, then it's, it's just like an Adobe Connect visual v video kind of a thing. So I'm just using this tool to figure out what time to do it. And so I've got one person that can do it at 3 to 4 a.m. Really? That's all? <laughs> uh, nobody else can do it any other time? Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Yay. So I'm going to choose, okay, no, office hours are going to be at 5 to 6 Oh, I can't do it on here. OK. Sorry, I'm getting confused. Um, I'm going to choose 5 to 6 PM. So I'm just going to come out here and say, and now everybody knows that, well, if I can spell Friday, it'll be good, that Fridays is my online office hour. Sorry, Travis, I'm going to go just a hair over. You're OK. OK. I'm going to post it, and so now everybody knows that's what it is. Okay, so polls. I haven't really used this in my class yet, um, you know, to kind of take a pulse, but um, it's definitely something that that could work. Okay, so the last yes question. Okay, so I, hopefully this next little scenario will show you that, but I will say, just off the top of my head, the equation editor, the wiki features, the ability to do good question, good answer, the, the ability to endorse, um, and the ability to basically co-construct that knowledge. How does it engage them better? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah, that's okay. compared to all the, you know, Canvas online oh, no. versus um, what? Yeah. yeah. So how it engages them better, and again, I'm coming from a STEM background. So let me show you this, this, this thing. So they're going to post a, a question to a problem. Okay. So, here's the, so I just had somebody post this problem. I guess the answer to the question is it's easier for them to use in a mathematical based course, okay? They can come in here and they can say, could problem 5.5. I don't know, I got to this point. Now she didn't use the equation editor and that's something else that we want to show. But you can put that equation very easily into an equation editor. And so if you've got a complex equation, it can come up with integrals and differentials and everything very nicely, okay? Which is something that a traditional discussion board doesn't have. Then, um, it's posted under, so it's archived under not only the homework five, okay, so it's archived under homework five, problem number, and, um, well, by date, okay. So then, so they posted that problem. I have a student answer block. So now this is like a call to other students. Okay, maybe it's two o'clock in the morning, and, and to be honest with you, that happens a lot, okay. Other students are working on their homework together, but they're not even, even in the same city, okay? So now I got another student who's editing it and I'm sure they're answering this question and their answer is gonna show up here in the student box, okay? Meanwhile, maybe I saw it, maybe I didn't, okay? And hopefully I did, because I'm such a good instructor. And then I'm gonna come down and I have an answer. Um, I'm going to give her some. I'm going to give her some, some guidance. Oh, hang on. Sorry. There we go. Um. Answer Greg so we can move on to the next 
Okay. So I'm going to put, okay, just give me one second. Okay, I'm going to put in my answer in here. So I end up with something that looks like this. Okay? So I have a question, I have a student response, I have an instructor response, and then I have a follow-up. And so this is really the beauty that I see. It's, it's kind of this ongoing conversation of, of marking student and instructor that you can't get on a normal discussion board. Okay. So if, you, if anybody's interested in using it, feel free to contact us. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Yep. Sorry.